How y'all doing? Welcome, New Life Church. Great to have all of you here. And then those of us that are joining online all over the world, we have a great online community. And it's so, uh, so awesome to have all of you with us. And uh, we're continuing, actually wrapping up this series on the things that Jesus never said. And today we're going to talk about a few things that Jesus never said about forgiveness and some things that he did say about forgiveness. But before we do, I, I want to just say from my heart to all of you, uh, be an early happy Thanksgiving. I hope all of you will enjoy your time with your family and your friends and eat a lot of turkey and, and don't glutton too much. Um, I hope that all of you Dallas Cowboy fans will enjoy watching. Let me finish. Finish, finish, finish. Watch the Dallas Cowboys lose to the Buffalo Bills on Thanksgiving Day. And it's going to be really tough because they're going to play the Patriots today and lose. So I'm already, and our sound guy, Nick. Nick, stand up, would you, buddy? Everybody turn around and look at Nick. Look at the shirt that he's wearing. That, that, is, that is a man of God right there, Patriots jersey. So just in time for my comments on the Cowboys, we're going to talk about forgiveness today. <laughs> Let's talk about forgiveness. I want to do a poll as we begin. How many of you um, know a person, at least one person on, on Facebook who is constantly annoying with what they post? Can I see your hand? Annoying people on Facebook. Okay. If your hand is not up, there's a very good chance that you are that annoying person <laughs> on Facebook. Jesus never did say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they post. <laughs> Jesus never did say, Father, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to forgive them, but I, 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 I'm not going to. Jesus never did say, I, I'm, you know, uh, if, if you get to me one time, I forgive you. But if you get to me the second time, Jesus never did say, I'm going to pray that Father gives you hemorrhoids, you know. How many of you are glad that God didn't give you the power to get back at people? Because if we did, we would, we would do some things that are pretty gnarly in our most heated moments trying to get back at people. Jesus never did say these things about forgiveness. What did he say? Well, Jesus talked about forgiveness a lot. And in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter uh, 5, 6, and 7, Jesus talked about forgiveness. He's talking about prayer. And uh, he gets down towards the end of his, his teaching on prayer, and he models it. And then as a PS, a postscript, he begins to talk about the, how we're to pray about forgiveness in our lives. This is what Jesus taught us to pray. Matthew 6 9 through 11. Let's read this together, everybody. Ready, go. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Now let's pause there just a second. I want to show you what Jesus did not say about forgiveness in this next part. He did not say, Father, forgive us even though we have not forgiven others. Rather, he said this. Let's put it up on the screen. Let's read it together. Ready, go. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our Debtors, Let's say it again. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven. The way God is going to forgive me is by the way I have forgiven others. Forgive me as I have forgiven others as they have wronged me. This is kind of a big deal to Jesus. In fact, it's so big that just a few more verses down the page, he, he puts it this way. In verse 14, he says, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Wow, it gets really deep and heavy here. But if you do not forgive others their sins, say with me, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay, now I want to just slow that down, and I want you to meditate, ruminate on what he just said. But if you do not forgive others their sins... Your father will not forgive your sins. I think Jesus is serious about this issue of forgiveness. And as we get in this message, you'll understand why. Because forgiveness, more than just about anything else in our lives, affects us in every area of our lives. 
our emotions, our relationships, our spirit. Forgiveness is vital to our well-being. That's why we talk a lot of, about it at New Life Church. But how many of you know sometimes you have unforgiveness in your heart and you don't even know it? In fact, it kind of feels good. You know, like, get them, God. But in actuality, that's, that's really coming from, my, from a feeling of unforgiveness, uh, but I don't even know it. And then down the road, the Holy Spirit turns on the light and goes, let me give you an example of this, okay? So back in the early 2000s, when some of you weren't even born, I had a friend of mine, his name is Eddie Summers, a dear friend of mine. He worked on staff with us for a lot of years. Uh, he did something that really was painful to me. One of the most painful, up to that point was probably the most painful experience of my life. And I felt betrayed by him. This public knowledge, we've talked about it openly, him and I both. And Eddie, um, he, he and I, we talked about it. We tried to reconcile. And uh, he not only hurt me, but he hurt a lot of people. I felt like he hurt, hurt a lot of people very dear to my heart. And uh, so we tried to reconcile. We tried to get past it. I thought I did. But about four or five years down the road after that, I went up to Camp, uh, camp to Hatchby and uh, there's a place out there where I go for solitude, silence, and prayer, and I'm up there sitting and talking to God, and, and Lord, I just, you know, I, I want you to just search my heart. If there's any wickedness in me, Lord, let me know. And, and he said, okay, okay, I'll turn on the light, James. You have unforgiveness towards Eddie. No, no, I don't. I forgave Eddie. We're all good, Lord. No, James, you have unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. You've actually started to feel righteous about your bitterness. <sighs> Thanks, Lord. So I leave that, uh, that quiet space, and I'm headed down the mountain back to Bakersfield, and the Lord then speaks to my heart. He whispers, James, call Eddie right now, and you deal with it today. Oh, my gosh, seriously. Call up Eddie. I was hoping he wouldn't pick up. He picks up. Hey, James. Hey, Eddie. I really need to see you today. He said, sure, where, when? I said, um, right now, like in about, you know, I'm headed down from Tehachapi, maybe in about 15, 20 minutes, Burger King. Because, man, you know, at that moment, I didn't care a lot for him, and I'm not going to spend a lot of money, so let's go to Burger King. <laughs> so we go to Burger King, and I pull up there. He pulls up. We go inside. We sit down. And it's awkward, you know. We do the little small talk. And then I said, okay, all right, Eddie, let's talk about this. I said, in my heart, uh, there's some things I got I to gotta talk to you about. And I said, let me tell you, first of all, there's some things that I've said and felt and done that I was wrong. Would you forgive me? And he said, absolutely, I will forgive you. And then I said, Eddie, there are some things that you've said and you've done that I just have not been able to get past, and I want to be specific about what they are. Here's the issue, how it makes me feel. And and Eddie teared up and he said, oh, James, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Would you forgive me? And man, it just washed over my soul. I said, I absolutely will, Eddie. And so there in Burger King, I reached across the table and I, I grabbed Eddie by both of his hands and we both started crying. Now, can you picture that moment? Can you picture that moment? So here are two dudes sitting in Burger King, crying, holding hands, and everybody's looking at us like, boy, you guys are, you're strange, dude. And so we prayed blessings right there in Burger King, right in front of God and everybody. We just prayed blessings over each other, over each other's families, over each other's ministries. And then we released each other to go be what, what God wanted us to be. And I remember walking out of that Burger King feeling like a million pounds was lifted off of my shoulders. And Eddie did too. And to this day, he pastors Grace Assembly here in town, has a thriving ministry. And New Life has done pretty well over the last 20 years. And I believe that's connected to that moment of forgiveness. Because I want to be really clear with you on something, that, that if you hold bitterness in your heart, if I hold a grudge in my heart, it limits God's blessings on every area of my life. That's why Jesus says you can't play with this thing called unforgiveness. You, you must forgive. Because if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive your sins, and there will be this lid on your life for the rest of your days. So you must forgive even as I have forgiven you. 
Now, this is going to be a little bit heavy for some of you today. I, I understand that. I really do. As a pastor, I feel the moment. Because I think even as I've started the message, some of you are going, but James, come on. Man, you don't know what they've done to me. Or for some of you, it's been recent. It's a real recent pain in your life or a rejection, a betrayal, and they've done you wrong, and, and, and it's too fresh for you to think about forgiving them. It feels like I, I need to be in this moment still. Or maybe you've had somebody that owed you money and they didn't pay you back, and now, you know, you're, you're suffering the consequences. Or, or somebody promised you something and they didn't deliver on it. Maybe somebody walked out on you and you needed them the most. And then for some of you, for some of us, it's an issue of, of, of abuse. For some of you, it's, it's, a, it's a verbal abuse. Somebody's verbally abused you or there's been this physical abuse or emotional abuse. And for some of us, sexual abuse. And I just want to acknowledge the pain of that and not move past it. Because it's not like the Lord says, get over it. That is not what he's saying. In fact, I want to say I fully understand the pain of abuse. When I was a little boy, I was sexually abused at a young age, and it, I didn't deal with it for 20 years. I was in my early 30s. I was pastoring this church. I'd never told my wife, never told anybody, but I kept that sexual abuse in my own life, kept it a secret until I finally got the courage to deal with it. So I just want to say to you up front that, that I'm not just flippantly saying, Jesus, our Savior, isn't flippantly saying, just get over it and forgive and move on, let it go. That's not what he's saying. What Jesus is saying is that the key to your future is learning to process your pain and, and to move into the freedom of, of forgiveness. So we want to talk about that for a few moments In this prayer, Jesus says this. He says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father. Everybody say, our Father. Our Father. Our, not my Father. Notice this. Jesus didn't teach us to pray, my Father. Why? This is the connection to your, to your forgiveness. Because God is my Papa. He's my Abba. He's my Dada. Literally, that's what that means, Abba. So Jesus says to pray, not my Abba, but our. Why? Because the way that I am connected to my spiritual siblings, my brothers and sisters, affects the heart of God. God feels it with, when his kids don't get along. He, he, wants, it, he wants his kids to, to play fair, to get along, right? I, I remember when Jim and John was growing up, and, and you know, I'd be taking them somewhere in the, in the car, and they would eventually get to this point where one of them would say the phrase, don't touch me. <laughs> Any of you other parents ever heard that phrase? If you have more than one child, you've heard it. Don't touch me. And that would just, Jim and John would just go back and, oh, you mean like this? Don't touch me. And like this? And before you know it, those dudes are going after it. And then I'm just freaking out as a dad. I'm doing the dad stuff. You know, I'm telling them, hey, you boys better knock it off right now. I'm going to pull. Don't make me pull over this car. Don't make me turn this car around. I'm going to take you right back home. And I'm not taking you to Jimmy's Arcade. I'm taking you back to the house. Y'all don't even know what Jimmy's Arcade is. Some of y'all remember, right? Right? All, all those over 50, Amen. You're over fit. No, I'm sorry, you're not. See, you got to forgive. You have to forgive. Here's what I'm saying. Us parents love it when our kids get along, when they learn to love each other, respect each other, honor each other. But when they're, they're fighting, even as adult children, when they're fighting with each other, you're like, oh, man. Jesus was teaching us to pray our Father. Why? Because we are the children of God. We are the sons and the daughters of the Most High God, and God wants us to get along because it, it affects his heart when we don't. In, in fact, Jesus said this is how important it is. In the same Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said this. 
He said, therefore, if you are offering your gift at New Life Church, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. Leave your tithe before you leave the church. Amen? First, go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your altar. Do you see how important this is to Father? Do you see how, how, how important this is to Jesus? He's saying, hey, if you're at church and you're worshiping, you're loving God, you're about to give your tithe and offering back to the Lord, and you remember that someone has something against you, not if you have something against someone, but they have something against you. It's not my issue. They got the problem. Mm -mm. Jesus said, if you remember that they have an offense against you, leave the church and go to that person and be reconciled to them. That's how high priority this is with Jesus. It's more important than going to church. It's more important than worship that you forgive because you want to keep things good in your soul. So who does unforgiveness hurt? First of all, it hurts God hurts his heart when his kids aren't getting along but then secondly it hurts you it hurts me see if, I, if I'm harboring by the way this is my uh, propensity in life I'm a man of justice I'm a cause kind of a guy you know so if you're kind of a justice right and wrong kind of a person you would tend to deal with unforgiveness and I'm speaking as a professional here but what ends up happening is if I don't forgive it ends up finding a place in my soul and my heart, and, and then all of a sudden, it's hurting me. It's literally poisoning, or according to Scripture, it's poisoning my soul. It's poisoning. Bitterness poisons my spirit. And then I begin to live in a prison of offense. Literally, I am imprisoned in this offense. But the key to getting out of the prison of offense is forgiveness. I choose, by the grace of God, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I choose to put that key in the prison door and I walk out free. I walk out of the prison of offense. You say, come on, James, man. This, you don't know, this is a painful. They are, they are not, they are my enemy. So what do I do? I'm overwhelmed by this, this feeling of, 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 you know, getting back or, or at least I don't want anything to do with them. What do I do with that? Here's what you do. In the same Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said it like this. In Matthew 5, 43, 44, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor, but, say it with me, hate your enemy. Okay, Pause. He was speaking into a culture of justice. Everybody was about justice. You know, an eye for an eye, you black my eye, I black your eye. Tooth for a tooth, you knock out my tooth, I knock out your tooth. If you get to me, I get to you. That's the culture of the day. And Jesus said, you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for, come on, James, really? Yeah, and pray for those who persecute you. Here's what ends up happening is you begin to pray for your enemy, that person that harmed you, that person that you're upset with right now. And you begin to pray for them instead of, and not, by the way, not in a way of God, get them. <laughs> God, go, go, go get them right now. That's, that's not what he's saying. He's praying. He's saying, pray blessings over your enemies. Here's why. And this is going to be the one fill in the blank today, so jot this down. Your prayer may or may not change others, but it always changes you. It may not change the person at all. And how many of you know that to be true? You can try to pray blessings, but they may, they may choose to be the way they are the rest of their days until they die and face God. But here's what praying blessings over your enemy does. It changes you. It lets you out of prison. It gives you peace of mind. You can then begin to move into relationships with freedom rather than being stuck in the past and dragging that bad relationship into the next relationship. So you know, earlier I told you about uh, I was sexually abused as a child, right? And for 20 years I didn't, I didn't, I didn't deal with it at all. And then 
uh, I had the opportunity after about four or five year period and through some counseling and through I learned to pray blessings over this person and I got to the point where at, I sat down across the table from her I'm 31, 32 years old and I said to her what you, this is what you did to me this is how it's jacked up my life but I want you to know I forgave you a long time ago because through prayer, through the power of Jesus, I have, I've been able to forgive you. And this is the beautiful part about it. I had zero hatred in my heart when I said that to her. None. It was gone. Why? Because I've been practicing over four or five years praying blessings over this person who brought harm to my life. Your prayer for those who hurt you may or might, may not change others, but it always changes you. So here, I want you to get the picture of what I'm talking about. The word forgiveness in the Greek language, you know what it means? The word forgiveness does not mean sweep it under the rug, pretend it didn't happen. It literally means to throw or to hurl. Do you get my little... It literally means... This pain, this hurt, this abuse, this thing that I'm holding in my heart, it, heart, it literally means, you ready? I'm throwing this to you. I don't want to hurt you. It's literally to say, you know, I'm not hanging on anymore. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm letting go. I'm not hanging on to this anymore. Uh, you know, that, that story with Eddie, the beautiful thing that came out of that story with, with Eddie was a song that I wrote called Letting Go. A lot of you have heard it. And, and one of the verses, it says this. Let's put it up on the screen. The relationship I held so dear overnight seemed to disappear. I wonder if I'll ever get through the pain. As I hold on to the hurt inside, the time has come for me to decide. To hang on is loss, but to let go is gain. And then the chorus says, I'm letting go of the things I've held on to. Fears of my future, regrets of my past. I'm letting go, but oh my God, I'm holding on to you. I give up control. I'm letting go. Now I'm free at last. The freedom that I experience comes when I let go. I hurl away from me. I'm not hanging on to the past, the pain, the, the, the bitterness, I'm, I'm, the revenge. I'm letting it go. I'm giving it to God. I'm letting go of the controls. And as I let go, healing comes into my life. Some of you remember Forrest Gump. There's a scene in Forrest Gump where he and his friend Jenny, his lifetime friend, they go back to the house where she was raised, where she was abused as a little girl. And they come up on the scene, uh, up on the, on the house, and the house is now old and it's empty. It's, it's empty except for the memories that are still there for her. And uh, there's something I want you to hear that they said. Let's watch. Every day we'd take a walk, and I'd jab her on like a monkey in a tree, and she'd listen about ping-ponging and shrimping and Mama making a trip up to heaven. I did all the talking. Jenny most of times was, was real quiet.
Sometimes I guess there just aren't enough rocks. Sometimes I guess there aren't enough rocks. I've experienced that. You have too. And you got to let go of the rocks because we keep throwing them at the past memories, the past hurts, the things. And sometimes, like in Jenny's case, that person's gone. But, but it's still hurting us. At some point, we choose to do what Jesus said. We, we, we choose to stop hurling the stones, the rocks at our past hurts and past betrayals and abuses. And we say we choose to take them and let them go. Give them to God so we can move into freedom because that's where God wants you. He doesn't want you bound, always looking over your shoulder at the past. He wants you free. Well, how do I do that, James? Where do I get that motivation? Here it is. You ready? Look at the cross. Anytime I find myself not able to forgive somebody, I got to look at the cross. Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive how? As the Lord forgave you. And let me ask you a question. You all know the answer to this, but do you and I deserve the forgiveness of God, the holy, almighty God? I don't. You don't. But he is a loving father, and he chooses to forgive us. Because of why? Because of what Jesus did at the cross. Where do I find the power to forgive? I got to go back to the cross. I learn to forgive others, even as the fathers forgive me through Jesus. My power is found in the cross. Pastor Anley Stanley put it this way. He said, in the shadow of my hurt, forgiveness feels like a decision to reward my enemy. But in the shadow of the cross, forgiveness is merely a gift from one undeserving soul to another. I choose to forgive. So over these holiday season, the holiday season in front of us, you're probably going to have an opportunity to forgive a family member, that crazy uncle that you see once a year, you dread seeing him again because he can say the most dumb things. Or somebody who's hurt you. I believe the Lord set up this message just in time for you and I to move into the holidays, getting freedom in our hearts. And can you imagine what will happen? as we begin to unpack all this stuff over the next six weeks and we enter into 2020 with a slate wiped clean, having peace with God, peace with each other, and we enter into this next decade with forgiveness in our hearts. Dave Willis said, holding a grudge doesn't make you strong, it makes you bitter. Forgiveness or forgiving doesn't make you weak. It sets you free. And I conclude with this. Forgiveness empowers you to set the prisoner free. And then you realize the prisoner was you. And you walk out of the prison and you say, I'm letting go. Now I'm free at last. I give up control. I'm letting go. Now I'm free at last. Amen. Let's choose to do that. Let's pray. In this quiet moment, the Holy Spirit is going deep in our hearts, talking to us about the things that he's wanting to do right now and over these next few weeks through the power of forgiveness. For those of you who need, who need the power of Jesus to forgive an enemy, to forgive somebody who has harmed you, who said horrible things about you or to you, I want to pray for you. Receive the blessing from Father right now. Lord Jesus, I pray in every heart in this moment that you will give us supernatural power from heaven to forgive others 
as they have harmed us, we choose to, to forgive them. They've offended us. So we, we choose by your power, by the power of the cross, we choose to forgive our mom or dad or our brother or sister, that aunt or that uncle or that best friend, Lord, that betrayed us and let us down. We choose to forgive. And then there are some of us that really need to go seek reconciliation with somebody that we've offended, that we have harmed, that we've done something that's hurt them. I want to pray for you. Father, I, I do. I lift up the souls of the people that are in this moment with me, and we, we, we bring our hearts to you. We ask that your spirit would empower us to be bold enough, courageous enough to go make things right with somebody that we've, we've harmed or offended or betrayed or said something wrong to. We want to be like you, Jesus. We want to love our enemies. We want to pray for those who persecute us. And we want to make things right. We receive it now, Lord. With our heads still bowed, our eyes still closed, some of us need to be put right with our Creator, with God in heaven. Just look to the cross. That's how much God loves you. Because all of us are unholy before a holy God. And God is saying, I put the weight of your sins on my son Jesus, and he took that weight to the cross, and I punished your sins in my son Jesus. And if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved. You'll be forgiven. You'll experience the power of forgiveness in your heart. So if that is you right now, I'm going to ask you to pray with me. With your heads bowed, your eyes closed, nobody looking around. But that is you. James, that's me. I want to be put right with God. I want forgiveness of all of my mess-ups. I want to have peace with God. I want, I want a clear conscience before the one who knows me the best and loves me the most. If that is you, on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to raise up your hand. You don't have to come down front, but I'm going to ask you just to pray right where you're at. But on the count of three, just acknowledge that you're praying with me. One, two, three. Just raise up your hands. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. If you're out on the patio, raise your hand up to the pastor out there. If you're watching online, you can pray with me right now where you're at. Let us all pray together out loud. A New Life family, let's pray with our friends. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I want and need your forgiveness. I come to you in desperate need for your saving grace, for your forgiveness of my wrongs, for peace in my heart, and a clear conscience before God. I believe that only you, Jesus Christ, can make all that happen because of what you did at the cross. So right now, please come into my heart, wash away my sins, Make me holy and pure before holy God. I accept this gift now in Jesus' strong name. Amen, amen. Come on, let's celebrate new life. <laughs>